the Pioneer viewers, how are you doing? I hope you are healthy and well. We are here with the new part of the Daily Map Report, where we will report the latest developments in Russia-Ukraine war. So what is happening on the front line? Has the Ukrainian army really started to retreat, as some sources say? It is not possible to say that. Russian propagandists are using these statements to hide the losses in war. Of course, there were areas where the Ukrainian army is making tactical retreats. But these retreats don't bring any gains to the Russian army at the moment. Let's examine this in more detail. A small reminder, the Pioneer team needs your support. Our team has been working hard for a long time and we thank you for your support so far. Don't forget to comment on our content for our channel to reach more people. Let's start if you are ready. The Pioneer reports. We we'll start with the latest developments on the Kherson front line. According to reports, there is a movement on the Kherson front line. As you may remember, we mentioned in our previous reports that the activity here tends to decrease. Russian troops seem to be moving for Krinky again. Krinky has become one of the most important fortified positions in this region. As you can see on the map, there is a large grey area on the east bank of the river. This grey area is intervened with the Russian army's areas of dominance. Therefore, the potential danger is at the highest level, and all the efforts of the Russian army here are about to establishing dominance in this grey area. However, this does not seem possible. The area is already geographically problematic. It is very difficult for the regular troops to establish permanent control units here. But strangely enough, the Russian army is still trying to establish dominance here at the level of the regular army units. The Ukrainian army, on the other hand, has turned the situation here into a guerrilla conflict. In this way, Russian troops are unable to establish a firm grip on the grey area. And what does the Ukrainian army gain from this? Let's put it this way. As you know, the Ukrainian army has a marine crop units here. The Ukrainian marines use the heat and the run technique, which is more of a guerrilla warfare strategy. Therefore, the Russian unit that attacking are suffering losses. At the same time, the guerrilla tactic used by the Ukrainian troops here reduces the efficiency of the Russian artillery's activities. Russian artillery was also active during the recent fighting in Krinky. However, there were reportedly no casualties on the Ukrainian side. This is what we mean by efficiency. Even if the artillery of the Russian army attacks, these attacks don't lead to any gains for the Russian army. When we look at the artillery activity, we see that the Russian artillery activity is concentrated in the direction of Krinky. Artillery units of the Ukrainian armed forces were called. Let's continue by looking at the latest developments in the Robotin sector of the Zaprizhia front line. According to the latest reports, there is a boxing match in the Robotin sector of the Zaprizhia front line, as the Russian sources put it. The side that is close to being knocked out is the Russian army, because during the attacks that have been going on for about four months, the Russian army has not made any major gains in terms of progress. The Russian army has some claims. However, since there is no visual confirmation of these claims, we can say that these claims are just a propaganda of a struggle. There are also areas where the Russian army advanced here and has been confirmed. However, these areas don't present any tactical gains. Fierce counterfighting is reportedly taking place in the Novoprokopivka and Verbov direction. So far, neither army has made any progress. At least, according to the confirmed reports, we don't observe any changes. In the Beholder sector of the Zaprizhia front line, we are also observing a continuation of the recent surge in uh, activity. According to reports, the Russian army changed its focus here and focus on Priyodny, especially the north of Priyodny is being heavily targeted by the Russian army. On the other hand, there are ongoing attacks from both sides of the Stromoyorsk. The Russian army first sees the line at the Stromoyorsk trying to cut the connection between Yorkhain and Ukraine. Although this effort has not yielded any results so far, the Ukrainian army needs to be more careful. Let's continue with the latest developments on the Donetsk front line. According to the latest reports, the Russian armed forces seem to have reached the southern and eastern outskirts of Novomikhailivka after heavily shelling. However, this is still Ukrainian resistance there. Let us state it again. The Ukrainian army's strategy on the Donetsk front line is based more on exhausting the Russian troops. For example, there is a similar situation in Avdiivka. Even if the Russian army captures some areas on the Donetsk front line, it will be very difficult for them to be permanent, because only flat train remains after the fierce fighting. This makes it difficult or even impossible for the army to take and hold positions. 
We also observed that the Russian troops, backed by long-range weapons, are launching attacks to occupy new positions near northeast of Gurgurivka. These positions are in plains which don't offer any defensive advantages. To the west of the plains, there are small but high places. And then there are big ones. But in order to reach them, the Russian troops must first establish a foothold in the plains. And this is difficult at the moment. On the southeastern outskirts of the Avdivka, counter-fighting for control of the flanks continues. Ukrainian armed forces positions in the city are under fire from the Russian troops. In fact, there is not much left of Avdivka. We are talking about a city that has been almost completely flattened. It is one of the risky but critical moves by the Ukrainian army to prevent the Russian army from becoming a permanent presence. In the northeast, we see units of the Russian armed forces trying to advance in the direction of Latstochkin. They are also supported by artillery. Thanks to this support, the main logistical supply routes by the Ukrainian garrison garrison. Thanks to this support, the main logistical supply route for the Ukrainian garrison in Avdivka is under direct fire control. Let's take a brief look at the artillery activity in the area. According to the latest reports, artillery units of the Russian armed forces targeted Ukrainian armed forces positions in Yekaterinovka, Pobeda, Krasnogorovka town, Permomskoye, Natalyovka, Orochetin, and Alexandropol. In turn, Ukrainian armed forces targeted units of the Russian armed forces stations in Estromikhalinka, Donetsk, and the village of Krasnogorovka. Now let's take a brief look at the Luhansk front line. According to the latest information from our sources in the region, the Russian armed forces attempt to advance east of Bulgorovka. Ukrainian armed forces units counterattacked near Yampoliivka and Terniv and managed to return a number of positions. Meanwhile, counterattacks continue to take place near Krahmanloi and Tabayevka. However, we don't observe a situation that will affect the entire front line at the moment. There are also reports that the Ukrainian armed forces have managed to make some progress northwest of Sinkivka, the Luhansk front line, which was the quietest from the front line in the war, has been very active in recent days and continues to be a front line where the gains for the Ukrainian army are high. So what do you think? Do you think the Ukrainian army will succeed in its attrition strategy on the Donetsk front line? What do you think about the increased activity on the Luhansk front line? Let me know in the comments because I read and I care and I respond to all of your comments.